Tivoli Gardens is one of the most famous amusement parks in the world. Located in downtown Copenhagen, this historic park has some good rides no doubt, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. This park is an incredible atmosphere, and it has a compelling argument as the world's most beautiful amusement park. Heck, it even helped inspire Walt Disney to make Disneyland. All these factors make Tivoli Gardens a park that anyone can enjoy, and I'll explain why in this review. This park opened back in 1843, making it the third oldest operating amusement park in the world. The ironic thing is that this isn't even the oldest park in the capital region of Denmark, as the nearby Bakken is older by an astonishing 260 years. Tivoli Gardens is quite literally located in the heart of downtown Copenhagen. You have City Hall on one side, and the city's main train station on the other. This location is both a blessing and a curse. Let's start with the positives. This park feeds off the energy of Copenhagen. This gives the park an incredible atmosphere. And when you're experiencing the park's taller rides, you get some surreal views of the surrounding buildings. They are some of the best sights you can get on any amusement ride. And this is one of the easiest parks to visit using public transit. Copenhagen Central train station is just across the street from Tivoli's main entrance. You can find trains here taking you across Copenhagen, to the airport, and even to foreign cities. On the downside, this park is a little annoying to visit if you're coming by car. Tivoli Gardens doesn't have its own parking lot. You'll need to find parking in the city. Some of the roads by Tivoli do allow street parking, but not all of them. Therefore, I would recommend finding a lot. The ones closest to the park can cost up to 400 Danish krona per day, or 55 US dollars. I would recommend the surface lots by the IDA conference. This is about a 10 minute walk from the park, and it's priced much more reasonably. It was roughly 20 Danish krona, or 3 US dollars per hour, and it was capped at about 210 Danish krona per day, or 30 US dollars. The other downside with this park's location is that it is landlocked on all sides by streets with no opportunity to grow. That's definitely a complication for a park that is just 20 acres in size, especially since this park is extremely popular. This is why Tivoli often has to remove an attraction just to add a new one. Yet, the park still managed to build a ride lineup with nearly three dozen attractions. That figure is even more impressive considering chunks of the park are dedicated to these large gardens. The sections with rides are dense. There are multiple instances where rides are stacked on top of each other. And since Tivoli is limited on land, they pack as much quality as possible into what they own. Many of their rides are stylized and plussed by ornate architecture or extravagant lighting packages. The rides here are stunningly beautiful. Even the entry pathways are lively. There's a section by the main entrance that feels like a bustling city street with all the shop fronts and games. Then there's an oriental area by Damon and with a giant pagoda, plus these lanterns strung over the midway. Then you have the gardens the park is named after. These are gorgeous. There is a photo opportunity around every corner. Everything at this park looks amazing. This top-notch appearance gives the park a wonderful atmosphere, and it's augmented by the awesome employees. The staff members here are super friendly, which is the case at most of the Danish theme parks. And then you have the energy of the bustling midways brimming with happy guests. And there is a good chance you'll encounter some crowds here. Tivoli Gardens routinely places in the top 5 for amusement park attendance in Europe, attracting between 4 and 5 million guests per year. That is an astonishing figure for a park as small as this. Now you'd think ride lines would be horrific given that sort of combination, but that usually isn't the case here. The waits for the top rides will usually hover around the half hour mark. That's even with me visiting on a weekend. And do not be afraid if you see a line spilling onto the midway. The physical queues for many attractions cannot hold more than 15 to 30 minutes worth of people. For example, the entire queue for Rusha Banan takes 15 minutes, if that. One of the biggest reasons lines aren't worse is because many people visit Tivoli not to go on the amusement rides. A lot of people go here just to soak up the atmosphere, see the gardens, grab dinner, catch a show, or listen to a concert. Heck, there even is a casino within the park boundaries. The original owners envisioned Tivoli as more than just an amusement park. It is a full-fledged entertainment complex. That is why Tivoli has a few admission options. Everyone must pay the 145 Danish krona or 20 US dollar admission fee. 
There are two different entrances you can use, but I've always used the one across from the train station. To experience the rides, you can either pay per ride or purchase an unlimited wristband on top of the admission ticket for an extra 245 Danish krona or 35 US dollars. You purchase these at kiosks around the park. The park gets busier in the evening, which makes sense given its location, famously beautiful lights, and entertainment. Interestingly, while most parks slash admission as it gets later in the day, Tivoli will sometimes increase it if they have a concert. For example, this past summer on the day I visited, the gate admission increased by 50% if you arrived after 6pm. Like many of Europe's city parks, Tivoli Gardens has very long hours. The park is routinely open as late as 11pm or midnight. Just beware that most rides tend to open a few minutes late, and they will all close early the latter blind side being my most recent visit. On most days, the rides will close 10-15 to 15 minutes before closing. That's reasonable. I made the mistake of visiting on a concert night. While the park was open until midnight, the rides closed 2-2.5 two to two and a half hours early, which happened all summer on concert nights. I had no idea until I caught this on the info sign on Tic Tac's ride board. I did not see any mention of this on the park hours page online but it was on the website, just not where I expected. This info was hidden at the bottom of each individual attraction's ride page, which seemed like a weird place to post it, but now you know so you will not make the same mistake as me. Further complicating matters is that the given closing time is when the final cycle will go out, so if something has a long line, the queue will likely close well before that. Most concerts are on Friday nights, and unless you want to see the act, I would recommend visiting on a different day. Rides will be open later, and crowds will be lighter, but if you do want to see the concert, just arrive early so you have plenty of time to do all the attractions before they close. You can hit the main rides here in half a day. I know a lot of coaster enthusiasts pair this park with a nearby Bakken. I've done this before, but I would advocate a full day at Tivoli if you can, especially if you care about more than just coaster credits. It'll make your day a lot more relaxing. You'll have plenty of time for re-rides, and you will also have time to enjoy the aspects beyond the rides, such as the aesthetics and food. I tried to do this in my second visit, but I lost a large chunk of the day due to a flight delay. If you want to maximize your day, I would recommend knocking out the most popular flat rides first. These tend to get the longest queues. The three to prioritize early in the day are the Gilnatarn Drop Tower, the Himmelskiba Star Flyer, and Tic Tac. The latter two are conveniently located right next to each other. Another smart one to hit early is the Damon and Roller Coaster. In general, the operations at Tivoli Gardens are fast, but Damon and can have slow dispatches. That is odd because B&Ms are usually super efficient. Part of that is this ride's loose article policy. Some rides, like this one, ban all loose articles, even glasses with straps. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Rushabanan is super lax. You not only bring all your belongings with you, but riders can enter and exit the train in the station while it's still moving, and guests lower their own restraint. All these factors allow this ride to run three trains with no stacking. And on that note, let's talk about the ride lineup. This park features four different roller coasters. It's not the biggest lineup due to Tivoli's limited space, but it does at least cover the main boxes of Kitty, Family, and Thrill Coasters. Rusha Bainan is the crown jewel. This coaster is nearly 110 years old, and it runs around and through a mountain. Despite its size and age, this ride can offer a deceptively wild experience. This is a rare scenic railway that still operates with a brakeman on board. They control how fast the train goes. Some of them are more daring, so you'll want to ride this a few times with different brakemen to figure out who goes fastest. But if you get a good ride in this coaster, you can get some shocking ejector airtime because of how minimalistic those restraints are. You have just a loose lap bar and no seatbelt. I highly recommend the very back row on this one for the most extreme ride. I have an entire review that goes into more detail, but this is the perfect top attraction for a historic park like this. Damon is a Balger and Mabyard floorless coaster that reminds me a lot of Hershey Park's Great Fair. Both rides start with elevated helixes. Then you have a bank drop and the same three inversions in rapid fire succession, but you need to be in the back to maximize the first few elements. 
the zero G roll is very whippy in all rows. This is among the shortest coasters from B&M, but it is impressive they were able to cram a ride like this in such a small space. My biggest issue with this ride is its reliability. Maybe I've just been extremely unlucky, but it was closed for half my visit in my first trip to Tivoli, and then it didn't even open on my second day a few years later. Malkavine is a mock-powered coaster. It is cool how this family coaster winds above the buildings and pathways, but this is an attraction I've yet to experience because it was under construction in my first visit. Then when I returned in 2022, the ride was closed, which had been an issue for many over the summer. Camelin is a Zier Kitty coaster. It's super smooth, making it a great starter coaster for kids and comfortable for adults who are either accompanying their little ones or seeking an extra coaster credit. The Bunny Hill is a genuinely fun element. It comes scary close to a tree, and it even gives an itty bitty pop of airtime. Moving on to the flat rides, this is where Tivoli's attraction lineup shines most. This park is some sweet flats. Most are plussed by lighting, stylization, or visuals. Himmel Skiba is the best if you want to take in the sights. This Funtime Starflyer is the park's tallest attraction at 26 stories tall. It is among the slowest Starflyers out there, but the swing ride compensates by offering one of the most impressive views of any ride. You ascend the tower twice every cycle, which grants you an incredible bird's eye view of the park, the entire downtown area, and even Sweden on a clear day. Guild Natar is another one offering an aerial view. This SNS drop tower stands 20 stories tall, but it is another ride banning glasses, so I wasn't able to appreciate the view as much as others. And that is a shame because you have plenty of time to take it in on the slow rise and hold at the top. While other manufacturers offer more extreme towers, this one still has a solid drop. It is sudden with a quick pop of air at the start. Fata Morgana is another tower, and a unique one too. This is a newer Husk Condor, which is basically an aerial scrambler if you're unfamiliar. Two of the arms featured the usual gondolas with caged cars, but the two other arms had giant spinning discs facing guests outwards. It was a neater and more thrilling way to experience a familiar ride, and it makes it considerably scarier because the forces push you outwards into the restraints. This one has decent speed. Then the sight lines of the back half of the park and nearby buildings is marvelous. And like many flats of this park, this one is a long cycle. Another weird one is Monsoonin. This is a Zier flying carpet, except this one features the rare suspended seating. In my first visit, the ride shot geysers upwards towards riders, which was a really neat visual. Those were not active in 2022, but the ride still offered a forceful experience. No airtime over the top, but the downswings are wild. You get blasted with positive Gs, and you're abruptly pushed forwards into the harness. Radio Bellerne is an underrated set of bumper cars. These cars have a lot of power to them. You'll feel each collision, and the arena is wide open unlike most of the ones you'll find in America. Aquila is your usual Zamperla air race. It offers some nice hang time, but this one is located atop an aerial platform for enhanced visuals. Galatine is an old sea storm Himalaya. It does not have the craziest laterals, but the rise is a long cycle, and the entire experience is enhanced by a theme-centered display and lighting. The best flat here is plussed in a similar way, and that would be none other than Tic Tac. This rise is a spectacle between the ride's mesmerizing motion and the auxiliary effects such as fog, lighting, and a giant clock on the ceiling. This was the first Mondial Shake to come to an amusement park, and it is intense. Take your average Hus brake dance, but allow the vehicles to flip as well. You don't get too many full flips on this one, especially compared to those in the German fair circuit, but you will rock quite wildly and get a ton of hang time. With that fast spinning, this ride is super disorienting. See my review if you want to learn more. This park used to have an even better flat ride in Vertigo. This technical park Flying Fury was one of the most intense rides in the world. This was similar to a booster, operated at the speed of a centrifuge. This made it arguably the best ride in the world for positive Gs. They were super forceful and sustained, which was a crazy combination. Then the ride also mixed in some slower points with sweet hang time. It's a shame this ride was removed, but it had horrific capacity and some maintenance issues in the later years. Check out my review for all the details. 
Fliuni Kufart is a charming dark ride past several fairy tales and stories. The ride is distinctly stylized after puppets, and it features a multitude of short scenes. I think I would have liked it better if it fleshed out a few of the stories more, but this is still a good ride, especially because there's a switch in each vehicle to change the language of the narration. I really appreciated this as an English speaker. Meenin is a mock boat ride that's been adapted into an interactive shooter. You do not keep score on this one, but you take aim at a series of targets, and they change colors depending who hits them. Then, this element is paired with some charming sets and a catchy soundtrack. Scare Silden is a unique funhouse. Unlike most that follow a linear path, this one feels more like a playground. There's no set path, and it's a wide open arena with a variety of fun obstacles. You have climbs, rock walls, spinners, barrels, bouncing platforms, and some fast metal slides. The park also has a haunted walkthrough in Villa Vendetta, but I unfortunately ran out of time to try it due to the closing issue I previously noted. This attraction is an extra up charge. Moving on to the water rides, Tivoli is quite deficient in this department. There is not a single ride here that'll get you wet. The only water attractions you'll find are a few leisurely boat rides. Kids have a handful of attractions available to them. Not only do some of the aforementioned rides have low height limits, there are some dedicated kiddie rides scattered about the park. But the most baffling thing to me is how many kiddie drop towers this park has. You have two side by side in the oriental area that have been there for nearly two decades. Then the park replaced Vertigo with yet another junior drop tower. Moving on to the food, Tivoli Gardens does really well in this area. The park is jam packed with food stands and restaurants. I'm pretty sure I saw a different one around every corner. There is so much variety. My favorite meal here thus far is the fish and chips over by Damonin. They were super fresh and delicious, and that is coming from a New Englander. Tivoli is equally as stacked in the game department. You have a wide range of carnival games, and unlike some parks where staff members will be endlessly begging people to play in vain, these ones are highly popular. Then you also have an arcade with plenty of games for younger kids, and a casino for adults. So do I recommend Tivoli Gardens? Absolutely. This is one of the best traditional amusement parks in the world. What makes this park special is the atmosphere. It is so unique. Between the downtown location, the beautiful gardens, impeccable upkeep, and friendly employees, this park is magical. Everyone can enjoy this aspect of the park. Then this historic place also is an exciting mix of rides. While this park isn't too heavy on the coasters, Rusha Bainan should be on every coaster enthusiast's bucket list, and it is a true standout. Then you have a great mix of flat rides and dark rides to round out the offerings. So those are my thoughts on Tivoli Gardens, one of the most beautiful amusement parks in the entire world. What are your thoughts on this Danish park? Do you think it's as special as I do? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.